Welcome to the Thinking Particles Who Knew video series. In this video series, we will talk about thinking particles operators that are used in very unusual, uncommon ways. In this video, I will show a procedural modeling approach that shows how you can use thinking particles as a procedural modeling tool. In this scene, we have a teapot, another object and a tree object. The teapot itself is an instance, a in, uh, 3D Studio Max mesh, as you can see, standard teapot mesh that is turned into a particle. Let me hide the teapot and turn on thinking particles again. So the teapot we see here is actually a particle fully controlled by thinking particles. And that's the beauty of thinking particles. Any 3D object in 3D Studio Max can be turned into a particle. We do this with our object to particle operator. We set it to object to particle and we also turn on the instance shape function. We put this particle in its own particle group. In this setup, we call this group T. The instance will give us the mesh in thinking particles. Now we have full access and can use all the power of thinking particles. What we want to achieve now is we want to instance some other objects onto the surface of this teapot. So I'll activate this uh, dynamic set and we can see instantly we have particles on the surface of this teapot. Now you would say, okay, that's a standard feature. That should be possible with kind of any particle system. However, we are using an operator of thinking particles to place these particles on the surface that you would not really use for this kind of things. And the operator we use to position the particles to calculate the position on the surface is not a surface position operator. In this case, we used a volume position operator. And the volume position is usually meant to fill any 3D Studio Max mesh with particles. So it's meant to fill a volume and that's the thickness parameter that allows you to define the volume if you want to fill inside an object or outside of an object. So usually you would use this operator to fill the teapot with particles. However, I'm going to use this operator in a totally different way. I'm not using the thickness, which you can see here is really creating a volume of particles. I'm going to set the thickness to zero. And by using a thickness of zero, it actually means I will place the particles on the surface. I will explain later why I'm using the volume position. For now, let's turn back the amount of particles and you can see we have nice, nicely placed the particles on the surface of the teapot. The next thing we are going to do is our geometric instancing. So we pick our other teapot and you can see instantly each particle becomes a teapot. So we have these teapots nicely placed on the surface. And now if we play around with our random seed on the volume position, we can adjust the look of our surface and how the teapots are placed. It's all interactive, happens in real time, and it's really nice to create objects with thinking particles. And all of this modeling is non-destructive. It's fully procedural, so you have full access to every bit including the alignment of the teapots. Right now we use the normal and that's the reason I use the volume position because it gives me as an output the normal of the surface and I can feed that into an alignment operator. Another interesting feature we use here is we control when the instances are created with the on option and the on is triggered by our object to particle. We use the particle ID as a trigger for an on event. So this is also possible. Not many users 
know that. This is why I'm showing it here. We use the particle ID as an on switch for the position born. So when a particle is born, we create our instances. And this will create the 500 instances right now of the teapot on the surface. We have control, as I said, on the position and alignment, and we can use all tools available to us in Thinking Particle 6. For example, we can adjust the rotation of these teapots on the surface itself. Or we could use a different object to control the orientation of our teapots. The great thing is the alignment has a two position input that lets you define where these teapots are facing. We are going to use a node helper and feed in the position. All we need to do now is just pick this dummy helper and all the teapots will automatically align towards this dummy helper. Keep in mind this is fully interactive, fully procedural. You can animate everything, every aspect and the teapots follow the node. This was just by one little node we added to our dynamic set. This is the real true power of thinking particles. It's fully procedural, it stays procedural and you have full access to all the aspects of your effects you build with thinking particles. Let me remove this node helper. We don't need this uh, dummy object anymore. And now you can see all the teapots are aligned along the surface normal of the original teapot. So what we could do here, we can use the alignment itself and animate every aspect. We can feed in any aspect and for example the rotation. So we can play around with the rotation around the X axis, the Y axis, as well as the z-axis rotation. Everything you see here is fully procedural, can be animated, can be controlled by another operator. All the power of thinking particles is at your fingertips. The instance operator is also able to use multiple geometry as input. So I just picked the palm tree and now we have the teapot and the palm trees. That's also a very powerful feature. You have full control of the objects you want to instance here. One thing we might not like here is these uh, placement of the teapots. So they are intersecting and overlapping. Also this can be solved in an interactive way. We use the PPAS AB operator that gives us the distance between objects, between particles, and we set the distance to 2.6 in this case here. Then we move all the particles that are too close in its separate group and kill them off. Very simple but effective method to get rid of the close by particles. As you can see here in this result, we got rid of all the overlapping teapots. And again, it's fully procedural, nothing is carved in stone. You can adjust the distance you want to have, the minimum distance. You can increase it or decrease it so you will get more overlapping teapots, they get closer, or you will set just a bigger distance to remove the overlapping parts. Once more, this shows the power of procedural modeling in thinking particles. Now, if we increase the amount of particles, we don't have to fear that we get more and more overlapping uh, teapots because our system automatically filters out the overlapping parts. So what we do is we just fill the remaining space that is big enough to add another teapot. So another thing is, how do we get this into 3D Studio Max? And there's this great tool called Snapshot. And Snapshot creates out of your particle system a standard 3D Studio Mesh. So what we have here now is a standard 3D Studio Mesh. You can do whatever you want, add modifiers, animate it, put it into another tool, whatever you like to do. It's now a standard 3D Studio Max Mesh. 
So all this is available to you and you have full control over what you want to do. Thanks for watching this. I hope you found this interesting and learned some new things and check out our other videos as well.